Okay, so today, and my email, if you guys get, you guys get my emails still? I want to talk about attachments. We talked a lot about attachments before, yes? Mm -hmm. So it shouldn't be too far. I didn't get it. You didn't get it? Are you on the mailing list? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right, well, we'll try it after class. Okay. 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 Uh, but, you know, in Go, especially, you know, for where you guys are at your level, you guys have learned enough to know that in general you shouldn't attach, right? Or you guys think attaching is bad? Have you guys heard that before and slapped on the wrist? Why did you attach that? As black as a stone here, and you're like, I want to attack it! Oh, so you attach here. And you had someone who was stronger than you go, oh, that was a bad move. Yes, you had this happen before? Most of you, hopefully. Michael, have you had this happen yet? Good. Pretend this is you. <laughs> and then you play this. Sorry, you're white. And I go, aha, a bad move. So the question is, why is that a bad move? Why is this attachment a bad move? Tom. Your opponent gets to Hane first. Yeah, basically you're starting this fight. It's almost like a capturing race right now. How many liberties do you have? Three. How many liberties does your opponent have? Whose move is it? Your opponent, right? So if it's three to three, and it's your opponent's move, oh, that's not so good. Now my stone feels very cramped. It feels very weak, right? It's like I just put a weak stone on the board just for fun. Whereas, if I just approach it this way, my opponent has a really difficult time attacking this stuff. Like, surprisingly difficult, right? I mean, sure, your opponent can come here and try to do something like this, but the problem is run away. Right? Or if your opponent attaches to you, oh, that's good, right? Because three liberties, three liberties, my move. Oh, that's great. Okay. So we'll play here. So maybe we'll do something like this. It's kind of peaceful, right? Black gets influence. I make a base. Something like this. Cool, right? So we can see that usually when we play this, usually we're just putting ourselves at a disadvantage. But there are many, 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 many times ago when actually this is a really good move. And the hard part for you guys is to determine, well, is this a good move or a bad move? You guys are, are you guys at this level? This is a good level? Good conversation to have? Tom says yes, everyone else says no. So I'm gonna go with Tom though. Yeah. All right. We're going to try to talk about and find attachments that are good and find attachments that are bad. Okay? So let's start a little bit of a game. You guys know this move? You guys probably know this move. <laughs> you guys, maybe you've seen that move? Maybe? And maybe you know this move, yes? Corner enclosure, 4 3, knight's move. Kind of familiar? Good. Uh, normally, what white should do, in this case, is split black, right? Black has two positions, white should break it up. Um, but today we're going to play it a little bit incorrectly. We're going to make this formation down here. We're going to pretend white is just pig-headed and wants to do what white wants to do. Doesn't care about what the opponent is doing. And uh, what is this formation called? Anyone remember from our Fuseki lecture? San Rense. San Rense. Very good. Three star points. San Rense. And the downside of this, however, is that means that black is to play this. Last two down. All right, maybe white keeps playing though. Maybe white gets four star points. Maybe black gets to play this. All right, so now we have an interesting situation, right? It's white's move. And what does white have? Does white have any points? Not really. Not really. Not really. What does white have instead? Influence, right? So what is influence? Potential or... It could be potential. And how do we define influence? Stones that would affect fighting elsewhere on the board. Good, so it's stones that help us in fighting, right? They could turn into territory. They could also turn into a moyo, right? So it's, it's a large swath of the board that we can just claim for ourselves. Uh, but influence is good, right? I mean, that means your opponent's going to have a hard time playing over here. Uh, territory, what's the definition of territory? Points. Yes, it's points, right? Your opponent can't play over there. Okay? So here's, you know, key number one. Usually, when our opponents, or, our, or we, depending on what side we're approaching this from, 
have influence. When someone has influence, usually, usually attacking is bad. Okay, so if it was Black's move and Black wants to go in here and attack like this, I'm going to yell at you. Okay, white doesn't have territory, right? White has influence. Attacking to influence stones, usually bad. I'm still going to say usually, but for you guys, I'm going to say always. Okay, be correct, I'll say usually. Okay? If, however, our opponent has stones that are getting very close, if not already territory, attaching, okay. Easy enough? That's, got it? Yeah. Okay, good. So attaching, okay. So it's White's move. So there are actually several moves here that White could consider playing. Uh, some of them are actually attachments. And I'm going to show you a couple of them right now. Just, these are moves that you can kind of add to your vocabulary. Just, you know, just recognize the shape, see if you can you know, remember the kind of position. Um, over here, this looks a lot like territory, doesn't it? Right? Let's find out. So we're going to attach here. That's a really weird place to attach, isn't it? Anyone see this coming? Ever saw it? You've seen this move before? <laughs> it's not always played in this position, but it's actually not that bad of a move. And because in this case, you can almost call it something, uh, you, you may have heard this term before, uh, a probe. Have you guys heard of a probe before? Yes? No? Or an asking move? Like we're asking our opponents, what do you want? And whatever you want, I'm going to take a look. <laughs> so, this move is very powerful, right? If black doesn't respond, right? Oh, now the stone's under attack and white gets the corner, right? So black has to respond if black wants any of these points that black thought were points, right? This looks a lot like black points, the main points. Uh, there are several good continuations. I'll take a couple suggestions first, and then we'll look at a different attack. What do you think black should do here? Three one, or three two rather? This one. No, one on that. Oh, this one, sorry, three, two, yes, sorry, yep. Uh, yes, this is a possible one. Good, are there any others? Five, two. Five, two, that's another one, very good. This is actually considered to be one of the strongest plays on this stone, right? You're just going to swallow it entirely. But you have to know a little bit of the continuations after this. Any others? What is attaching? What is white trying to do? You have any idea? Like, why would white attach you? Start a fight. Start a fight? What, what do you look for in a fight? There's something about fights that... Just taking away points. Take away points. That's, that, could be a net, that could be an end result. But Your stones. Capture stones. Capture stones. Before you capture stones, what are there on the board? The weaknesses. White is looking to expose weaknesses. That's the idea. We're trying to poke around and see, hey, black, where are you going to leave me a weakness to exploit? And so one problem with moves like this and like this is there are still these weaknesses, right? Yes? All right, if you play there, I can play there. I know everyone in the room wants to answer here, right? It's usually wrong. They're like, hey, white's poking at my weakness, right? White's going to cut me. I don't want to block. Right? But then white gets to go here. Look, another weakness. This is very good exchange for white. All right, white just was able to play a bunch of free moves, basically for free. So what kind of move do we have to prevent weaknesses in ourselves? We're black. What kind of move can we play to not allow ourselves to have weaknesses? 3-3. Three, 3-3, three. Three, three, very good. Very nice. Do we have any weaknesses? No. This is, uh, you know, like those movies, they always have like the big bouncer who just can't feel anything. <laughs> no effect. This is kind of like the big bouncer right here. Right, like you can't hurt him. He may be slow, right? He's a little slow. It can be hard to capture this stone. The stone can run away but you can't hurt this guy, right? Too big, too strong. Another one, this one, very similar. All right, also kind of that big bouncer move. All right, we don't want to let our opponent expose weaknesses. 
both of these views are worth looking at. So if black, you know, is looking to fight, wants to kill, that's the best possible result. Yes, usually this, possibly this. If we want to play very simply and just say, all right, it's your problem. I'm strong. You're on your own. Not give any help to our opponents. Something like this, or like this. Okay. Let's look at another attachment. We'll come back to this one. Okay. There's there's lots of different variations and lots of cool things that are that can happen in this type of situation. But take these general principles, right? If we're we're not attaching influence, right? We're attaching something that's very close to territory. Uh, black has a lot of choices, and some of the choices involve letting weaknesses. It's still on the board. Here's another white attack. This one look familiar at all? It should look familiar, right? It looks a lot like this one, right? Knight kill, attached at the bottom. You have a knight's kill, attached at the bottom. This one also can be a good move. You guys might recall that in the 4-4 point, right, white can come in. White can come invade here anytime. Right, just take it away. There's three points for white on the 4-4 point. Uh, how about when we go here though? Basically, white is looking at more something more like a coat. Kind of can depend on where their stones are around, but just nothing else. White is like looking at a coat. So our code's good. Goes bad. Sometimes depends. good. Depends. On depends. Right. Depends on what you get for it. <laughs> this only means there. this is a co. Very bad there. Yeah, I think it's very bad here. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Not a, you don't want a co here. Uh, and the reason is because well, co means well, I can play all these stones, and then black could still kill them all, right? So I might get something out of it, but probably bad. So I might look at a move more like this. This move is actually much more interesting because what is black going to do? Well, let's try it. Let's read out a few moves and see what black can do. What do you want to do, black? You want to do that? I don't think so. Right. You're splitting yourself. Yeah, you're splitting yourself. Don't do that. White is attaching, right? White is looking for weaknesses. What are you doing when you play that? <laughs> making more weaknesses. You're making more weaknesses. Not a good idea. Bending over. Bending over which direction? Mm, not a good direction. <laughs> not a good direction? Oh, you're talking about this. Three, three. Yeah, three, three makes sense, right? This is the easiest point. We know that Alright, black plays this. Why can you just live like that? Easy. You know, corner, very easy to live in, right? Especially in that 3 3 point. We don't want white to have that. So we say, oh, damn spot. Oh, wait. That's a spot. <laughs> white will play here. Are there any weaknesses left in black? Yes. Yes. Where is it? Uh, 17 4. 17 4. Right there, right? So black really wants to do something to fix it. But you could do this, but that seems very slow. That fixes it. Uh, the usual move that black does to fix it is this one. Because in addition to actually fixing this, why white cannot cut here? Let's go up this ladder. White can't crawl around the edge, and black can scoop out white space. So very powerful move. Uh, from here, white actually has several choices. <coughs> Especially depending on the situation. Uh, white could jump over here, try to make a base crawl underneath here. White can simply turn, right? Expose that weakness again. Black will usually respond one more time. Then black can try free move. Or white gets another free move, excuse me. Well, uh, something like this. So white's not completely alive yet, but white's starting to look like white has some sort of a base going here. And in fact, if white wants uh, you know, black to his move out here, trying to seal white in, to make a base, white actually has another attachment. Right, so we can 
start to see how a base will be getting made here, right? In the middle of Black's territory, isn't that awesome? You guys are not excited by attachments, are you? <laughs> you just feel the, the great responsibility that comes with this great power. <laughs> so notice that if we were to play here, Black would block here, right? Force your stone run this way. When you play here, basically, you know, Black doesn't really want to block over here, right? Because now your corner would be extra big. Usually, you this move, you attach again. Uh, but you really wouldn't want to run white into your corner this way, because if white played here, you play here, right? If white played here, you play here, and that white would come this way. See how you want to use this stone. So that's why we attach. We can attach here. Right, so we're trying to avoid this stone. See this stone? White has, black has an extra stone on the board. If we play here directly, black can use that stone and guide you towards it. If we play here, you know, you guys have all played like monkey in the middle or, I don't know, tag, right? You guys go around that big tree in the yard and the tiger is trying to get to the other person on the other side of the tree, but the other person just runs around the tree and you can never get to them, <laughs> right? Because when you run over here, they run over here, they run over here, right? You guys see this? That's this move, okay? This is the tagger I want to avoid. I don't want black to be able to use this stone. So instead of coming here, invading in the corner, we can attack here. It's very similar, right? Just one line off. That's a good way how we avoid the tree. Uh, I'm going to look at one other attachment at this position. This attachment, you usually don't see in even games, um, because usually some sort of invasion is better. But, Playing handicap, you will see this. You guys seen this attachment? You're usually the black player. The white player just nobody's ever tried that again. Dan, you're three gone. No, ever. Ever? Ever. I don't believe it. It's true. I don't believe it. Not in my recollection. Okay. I don't believe it's been tried. <laughs> I've seen it, of course, but but nobody's tried it. Before. I'll try it against you. All right, we have a challenge later. <laughs> so right here with this attachment, uh, again, this is a little bit strange of a situation um, because white can actually do things like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. There's actually a lot of moves white can do. White doesn't have to just come in here and attach directly, so it's a little strange. But in a handicap game, what is white trying to do to black? Split. Well, split and create weaknesses, right? The white player in the handicap game is the better player, right? It's the stronger one. will be the better one in attacking and defending the weaknesses and cutting points. So if white can create a little mischief here, hey, that's, that's got to benefit the stronger player, right? I would think so. I play, I play this all the time in my handicap games. And it's hugely successful against much weaker opponents because they freak out. Because here's the next two moves, right? First of all, the first question is, Black doesn't know what to do. Right? Do you play this? Do you play this? You could play that, but that seems... You know, that bouncer idea? Seems very slow and kind of stupid. Very strong, but slow and stupid. Right? Same thing here. That's just wrong. But you're asking black a question. You know, do you want to push white this way, or do you want to push the white this way? And as the black player, as the person who's taking the handicap stones, the person who, you know, is probably weaker than the white player, probably have no idea. What do you think? Which direction do you want to push white? I like the 11 line. You like this one? Yep. What's your reason? Because uh, the stone on the 4 line is lower than the stone on the 16 line. So, I don't know, feels so like... more potential over here? I feel like white would have more potential threats if I pushed him. Oh, I see. Way. I see. You think white has an easier time living over here? Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. All right, let's go with it. You know where white's next move is? Nine three. No. No. White. If if white thought white could just live here easily and be happy, white would play that. But if this is a handicap game, white's not going there. Let's be honest. Yeah, white's going there. If this is a handicap game, right? White is cutting. <laughs> White says, aha, I made you have a weakness. Ha ha ha, we'll cut it. Right? This is this has happened to your, you in your handicap game, right? Even Dan, you've had this happen. Okay. <laughs> so as good as you're going to get. 
right? This is going to happen to you. So, what does black do? No ideas, you guys? Extend. Everyone's cut, right? So try to fight. Extend. Uh, which extension does Evan want to try? I would like to do 12-3. 12-3. Evan votes for that one. Are there any other ideas? I feel so, like maybe you should Atari at 9-3 first. Okay. Tom says it's important that we Atari first. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, because if, if white Atari is at 9-4, yeah, then you... Sorry? Do you want to right, we'll, we'll look at this in a moment. Other ideas? If you want to see what else, what else are you guys thinking? Michael, what are you thinking? How would you deal with this? Why, first of all, you guys can see how many different ideas you have. This is why this benefits the white player, the stronger player, right? Whenever your opponent gives you lots of hard choices to make, chances are pretty high you're not going to pick the right one. Like, just kind of going without saying. But there are some general principles we can apply here. When we're cross cut, the first thing we want to try to do is help our weaker stone. I guess, I, actually, let me rephrase. The first thing I really want to do is if I can kill a stone right now, I'll kill a stone right now. I can't kill a stone right now, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to help my weaker stone. So which stone is weaker? Yeah, I think this one is. 